half the crew were um, able-bodied, half, uh, half had dis other disabilities. I think there were two of us who, who were visually impaired. Um, but the boat has been fully equipped and, and, and specially modified to the point where I think there were, there, there were facilities for eight people with wheelchairs. All the decks are fully accessible with chair lifts and everything. They have hydraulic steering. Um, this particular tall ship is about 400 tons, but you could actually steer it with your little finger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really amazing. Yeah. That's one of the power, one of the most yeah. powerful things when you sail a ship is just one tiny little motion yeah. or one tiny correction can control the entire ship. Yeah. It's really powerful. Yeah. yeah. Um, they have um, large. They had a large, um, large, large screen uh, radar system on board. Oh. Um, they had an audio compass, so a totally blind person could actually. Work this is this is this is my dream come true. Okay, what's their number? How, who's who's who, who's answering the phones at this place? This is exactly <laughs> what I want. This is that's exactly my dream come true. Who should I send this? I'm gonna. We're gonna figure this out. I'm determined. One of my goals, at Aaron's opinion, is to make people's dreams come true. Mm. Sometimes I make my guest dreams come true. Like like yours but actually today i'm going to make my dream come true where do i so where do i send this episode to this sailing organization who who, who do you think would want to would want to talk about this um oh well like i said this is the the the, the um, jubilee sailing trust i'm not sure who else you would speak to there was an organization called sailability for a number of years mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they're actually still in, in existence in the uk though Mm hmm. Jubilee Sailing Trust. I yeah. see. And do, do you think that organization is still up and running the, these days? I think that I, I, well, I, I'd hope they would be because they've actually at the time when I did when I was when I sailed on the Lord Nelson, that was the only uh, that, that, that was that they 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 actually built a second um, wooden tall ship. So they, I believe they have two. Um, oh, wow. The last I the last I I there were some one of our exhibitions in, in Birmingham, I remember talking to somebody from there a few years ago, about, about two years ago, and um, the Lord Nelson was, current, was at the time, I think, on a tour around, um, around Australia. Mm. So I think they're very much, they're, they're very much hoping, I very much hope that they are still in business because as you say, when, when, when out there on deck, you know, it's, it's a fully working, it's a fully working experience. You know, you, you're on watch for like four hours, all times of the day and night. To be up to be up there in in, in the elements with um, the, the the sound of the waves crashing around you and um, I, I'm working with a team of people. It really is good. And one one of their one of the testaments was they, they, they'd actually, as I said, they they cater for people with lots of disabilities. And they've even said that they, they, they've even had two or three cases where people have come on board at the, at the start of the week or ten days or however, however long. Very, you know, fairly limited movement. There was one particular guy on crutches who was actually um, really wasn't sure of himself. And the confidence he got from actually doing doing this experience, he actually left the boat at the end of the week and then phoned the office a few days later to say, by the way, I left my crutches on board. Don't bother sending them back. I've discovered I don't need them. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So so wonderful so, um, so good so good well i mean that's that's excellent so i mean what do you think if i search jubilee say well maybe may, maybe you can um uh maybe you can message it to me uh, maybe you can send me some more information may, i mean maybe are they on facebook could i like send them a message on facebook this company or tweet them or i'm pretty sure they would i'm pretty sure they would be i have to say the um social media the social media thing um i i find it Quite, uh, I'm, I have no vision at all. So, mm -hmm. I, I have quite a few aspects of it. I find I, I find it a little bit too visual. But I'd be very surprised if they're not um, uh, quite um, pronounced on so on social media. I'm pretty sure they would be. Wonderful. So Jubilee Sailing Trust, and you, and so are they? Are they British? Is it based in the? What? Where is it based in the UK? Though yeah, they're they're based in. I think they're based in Southampton. Hmm. Okay. Jubilee Sailing Trust Southampton. All right. Well, I will certainly um, send them this episode and let them know that I'm when, when they're if they're able to do tours. So, okay. So then, like, how long do the tours go, and how do they organize the destinations of the tours? This particular tour was weak, um, and at the time they were that they I think they they did quite a lot of sailing trips around Europe. So um, they had they had a few shorter tours as well, uh, but they, I, I was so pleased. That the the Rotary Club actually sponsored me for the full seven days. 
Um, mm. We could have done a short, a shorter tour for three days, but I think they felt that it was doesn't give you long enough, really. You know, you, you're just starting to get into the get to, starting to get into the swing of things um, mm. um, before it uh, before it ends. So I'm not quite sure how the two um, how the how the two boats operate these days, but I, th I think it's I think it's very similar. Um, they have a, have a whole, whole, whole variety of um, tours, really. Good. So, you, so do you think they have like tours like all over the world, or is it mostly like in around the UK? No, they go all over. Hmm. They've. They, I know. I know they've done. They've, they've sailed across the Atlantic. Lord Nelson was um, was um, traveling around Australia for some time. Um, I th the what's the other boat they have? Uh, Tenacious, I think it's called. Um, so yeah, the, the, oh yeah, they 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 offer a wide range of of um, sailing opportunities. Mm, mm. How do you how do you spell jubilee? By the way, how do they spell it? J U B I L W E. Excellent. Well, that is that is fantastic. So, um, and then your the other experience that's really fascinating to a lot of blind people and also quite controversial actually is your interest in mountaineering um or actually i should go back and i should say just just to be careful um do you consider yourself to be a mountaineer are you interested in that uh hobby what what, what can you tell us about that i've always been someone to try and and um to to challenge boundaries uh it's the, that the, the the mountaineering trip came along i'd um, I first read, heard about an opportunity that guide dogs were doing um, in back in oh, 1994, I think it was. Um, I've always enjoyed the outdoors and uh, try, trying, trying, new, try, trying new things, trying new interests. Um, and it was whilst I was in the office one day and an email came through and they were, they were looking for people to take part in a charity trek up um, Kilimanjaro to raise funds for um, uh, the charity voluntary service overseas. Uh, this charity works in many of the countries in the third world, providing um, much needed support to, um, uh, uh, to people. So I, I, I sort of got, I got into it through, th um, th th through that angle, really. Great. And then, so then what happened? What can you tell us about, you know, the experience going to, uh, I believe it's Kenya and what, what can you tell us? Right. So, okay. So what, what, what was it like traveling to Kenya and the whole experience of climbing you know, Kilimanjaro? Uh, the whole thing, I mean, it was an absolutely, it, it, it was a 12 month project from start to finish from the, from initially um, putting my name forward and cause I, I'd, I'd explained I was totally blind and, um, but they, they were, they were absolutely brilliant. The, the organizers and everything else, uh, they allowed me to bring a friend with them as well. And uh, my friend Roger had actually at that point said, well, I'll be doing as we'll, we'll be doing a lot of the training with you, and it's something I'd like to do. So we then embarked. You know, we, we're both in full-time employment. Um, we then embarked on a on a on a very intensive eight months of. We, we had to raise. I think I think we had to raise about four thousand pounds between us, and we then had to organise all our travel and, and pay for our flights and everything. So um, the whole thing from developing the the, the website to promote the activity. Uh, recruiting people to work with us on a, a um with a fundraising committee organizing lots of events to try and you know, to, to raise to, to raise our profile to, uh, and, and to raise the funds we were we literally worked flat out um we had a 24-week training program that we had to stick to rigorously and um everything from um walks that gradually got longer and longer to lots of sessions in the gym um and also getting used to the uh, putting ourselves in a position, you, you're trying to get get acclimatised by by um, re regularly sitting in the, visiting saunas and one thing or another to 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 get to, to, to make sure that we were sort of um, prepped for the, uh, for, for the for the conditions we were working in. Um, to actually going out to to do to doing the trip itself, it was uh, it was just such an amazing experience. Um, I'm, I'm probably not. I'm probably not doing it justice at all. We actually, uh, in in the time we got, to, uh, 
really, really, really able to touch the surface of, uh, of, of what we did. We actually, we actually raised um, £8,200 in the end um, for, for the charity. And we actually also had the opportunity, we had the opportunity, we arrived in, Tan we, we arrived in, in Tanzania, um, we had the opp an opportunity to visit a couple of uh, projects where we actually saw firsthand what the actual, uh, where, where the money was going to. And it was the most emotive experience I've, I've probably I've, I've, you know, I've gone through. There, was, there, were, there were 24 of us from Accenture from all over the world. At the start of the meeting, we all, we all, we all met up with people, there were 10 countries represented and everyone was like laughing and joking. By the end, by the end of, the, of, of, of the experience at the, the Atoto orphanage we went to, um, a number of the girls in the group were in, were, were in tears. People could, just could hardly speak. The conditions we, 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 you know, we witnessed was something, it was absolutely, they're, they're, it was absolutely, we were just open mouthed. You could, you could hear a pin drop, everyone, everyone was just so quiet. Um, I remember coming back to the, coming back to the um, hotel where we were staying, staying at the time. Um, Cause L Leah Toto is, it's, an orphanage for HIV abandoned orphans. They had mm -hmm. 150 children there at the time, and and there were also many a number of children whose parents were still alive, but they just could not they couldn't look after them. And you you walked around you walked around this place, and I think the thing that really struck me though was the children were so happy. They had they had barely anything, but they were so happy to actually to to come up to us and talk to us and shake our hands. Um, and it was really, it was really sobering to actually think to, to walk around with, with with the very very basic medical facilities and everything else that they have. Um, we just we just don't know how lucky we are, and it, it's even more sobering to think that these people are actually the lucky ones. The you know, the conditions that you were talking about, people living with um, in in facilities with no sanitation, open drains, you know, the stench was um, every, every everything about it. There was several people in a, you know in a room uh in uh, just like sh um they, they were just shacks basically and um, and you think these are the uh, and you think these are the fortunate people and it it really it really put it into perspective um but i think it it steered us all on to the to, to the climb itself uh we left we left the safari lodge and traveled over traveled by uh, a, a day a very uncomfortable minibus over to over to Tanzania, um, where we, you know, we endured everything from a rather experienced um, border crossing to, at one point, the I remember the the, the vehicle space. Oops, sorry, the vehicle we were travelling in actually sprung a leak, and there was petrol pouring out all over the place. You've got the the one of the drivers standing there with gaffer tape trying to trying to 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 fix the the exhaust into place into into 30 degree temperatures and there's you know petrol spewing out all over the, um, here there and everywhere and we're just like this is unreal um we were actually my friend was videoing the whole uh, the, um quite a lot of the time as well we, we actually produced a dvd and um at one point he suddenly realized he was staring down the barrel of a, um an ak-47 because the security guards did not like us filming we were like okay probably now's the time to dispose of the ca to get rid of the camera for the moment <laughs> um and then we, we arrived at the at the uh, the lodge where after a night's debrief we we set out again to the foothills and we it was then five five days trekking up kilimanjaro and it took us two days to go down but you know, at, at, at the start of the at the start of the trek in the daytime, it was plus thirty degrees. Um, we went through all all, all of the climates, the, um, the, the eco climates, and you know, the, so everything from rain for, the, the rainforests at the the um, at the start of the trek. As time went on, it gradually became colder and colder. So it was necessary for more to, you know, to wear more le more levels to the ultimate um, nighttime trek where. You, what, what from, from base camp um trekking through the night because you you just would not be able to walk it during the daytime um and we were in temperatures of minus oh minus minus 15 ooh, plus ooh la la. yeah ooh la yeah la. so it was um 
yeah, I, I'm I'm not the first blind person. I, th I think um, Matthias alluded to the, um, the fact that I was the first blind person to actually to 